famous in the world of esports, it's safe to say you need to be able to appreciate a good meme. <laughs> True superstardom in this world doesn't take place in big press conferences, red carpets, or glamorous photo shoots. In esports, you've got to master the art of Reddit. The combination of being absolutely incredible at your game of choice, while simultaneously not taking anything seriously. I dated a girl that went to high school with you, Shroud. She saw me watching your stream one time and she told me about the time she slept with you. Word on the street is that you've got a fat girl up to me. <laughs> oh no! Maybe nobody in esports history embodies this more than the king of Reddit himself, Shroudy Rowdy. From clutching on the biggest stage with Cloud9 to the top of the Twitch charts. This is his story. Shroud joined Cloud9's Counter-Strike Global Offensive roster on September 1st, 2014, after the organization acquired Complexity's roster, which featured Shroud as a stand-in. Shroud was a streamer who had been competing in ESEA qualifiers with Exertus Esports and Manajuma during 2013 and early 2014. It was during this era that he impressed the eventual Cloud9 roster and landed himself a spot on the squad. The main way I kind of got scouted was I streamed a lot. Streaming is actually a good way for people to scout, I guess, because they can watch your stream. I didn't even know I was going to join the team. I just finished the regular season with Manajumas, and then a week, a week after, Dborn messages me and says, hey, do you want to join Complexity? Which is Cloud9 now, and I was just like, of course, yeah. From his beginnings in Mississauga, Canada, Shroud was bred to play games. He lived with his father, who built computers obsessively, and introduced Shroud to games as a child. No, I love games. I love games, I love computers. I, I build every single computer we own. And um, since he was really tiny, I was putting him on, on my lap and, you know, let him do whatever. And then I introduced him to Counter-Strike because I, I liked that game. And uh, he picked up so quickly that after a couple of months, it was pointless for me to play with him. Shroud started streaming while Pro Counter-Strike was still a pipe dream for him in 2011. He'd actually lost interest in CS during Source, but his FPS fire was rejuvenated Ooh. when a friend gifted him CSGO on Steam a year or so later. Shroud was a huge fan of Summit 1G on Twitch, and wanted to give streaming a try. So I first started streaming, oh boy, it was probably like 2011-ish. Um, I didn't have any viewers. I streamed probably for a year with one viewer and that was myself. Um, and the reason I started streaming was because of Summit. I was watching him play and he had, you know, like a couple hundred um, viewers and it was just how much he streamed and like inspired me. He quit his job and whatnot. It was just, I was like, I want to do that. It was a long time before he saw any success on the platform, but his pro career in CSGO allowed his stream to grow. Shroud made his LAN debut with Cloud9 in 2015 at ESL ESEA Pro League Season 1. Shroud and C9 won the NA bracket and then finished second to Fnatic in the international finals. They have got no more grenades. There's no kit though on Cloud9. They've got almost no time if they die now. He jumps and gets the shot and that's probably gonna be the round. Shroud can't do a thing here. Flusher picks up a quad kill in return. This has gone horrifically wrong for Cloud9. They had this game in the bag at 15-11. All they need to do is close it out. And once again, they have struggled to finish off the map. And Pronex is going to put up a very good grenade here. They're going to walk right into it. The follow-up Molotov to burn up a little bit more damage. And Sean goes down. This JW with the kill is talking great for Fnatic. They've done it time and again. Two major championships. And here it is. They are your victors here at ESL ESCA Pro League Season 1. In an era where North America was considered the minor leagues of Pro CS, C9 making it to the Pro League Finals was huge. Cloud9's summer run in 2015 was big for NACS, and Shroud was quickly building a reputation for being one of the most talented players in North America. Cloud9 looked at Shroud and they saw potential. They liked his decision making, they liked his positioning, and they said, okay, if we can develop this guy, if we give him more experience, we like how he's playing the game, 
Um, but if we give him more time to develop with good teammates, those frags will come. The frags aren't the issue for them. They saw how stellar his aim was, how pinpoint and precise it was. I love Shot of Death, and I think he's one of the best players. He's one of the best players I've ever played with, man. Probably the best, best pure aimer I've ever seen in my life. Shroud is literally like the best aimer in North America, like hands down, I feel like, when he's rifling. Like, you can watch this guy on stream pull off the most ridiculous 4Ks and 5Ks. After their ESL Pro League finish in 2015, Cloud9 and Shroud's next big finish was at DreamHack Bucharest in 2016. Once again, they were the runner-up, falling to another one of the world's strongest teams, Invertus Pro. On top of the balcony position, they're gonna try and bait it automatic though. Neo's got the first shot, automatic's still in behind the hut, he's still not peaked on this. He's gonna try and cut them out for the broken wall, he does get one, but now it's just him remaining and he's on to 16, he's gone! Virtus Pro, your DreamHack Open champions in a very, very convincing tournament. These guys cease to stop and easy against Americanas. Once more, they dominate USA. During the latter half of 2016, Shroud and Cloud9 finally won a big tournament. Now, the one thing about dropping through is they could push to B as a result, but they want to contest Stewie, who gets one. It's Cold Zero, bomb down, automatic in a one versus one, and he's got no idea where automatic is. He's rotated all the way to long. And Cold might get caught. He's looking down toward the door. He's in the open. It's automatic to give Cloud9 season four. C9 defeated SK Gaming in the finals of ESL Pro League season four to bring a significant title to American Counter-Strike. That fateful summer of Cloud9 was capped off with a bang. And this team was single-handedly making a case for North America's potential to compete on the international stage. At this point, Shroud had been relegated to more of a supporting role than his early days of wowing on stage with his aim. I'm trying to help those guys fucking be the all-stars. <laughs> I'm no longer the all-star, for those of you that don't already know. My role isn't to fucking make plays and all that bullshit. It's to help them make plays. <laughs> I'll die for them, I'll flash for them, I'll fucking smoke for them, I'll do anything for those guys. I don't care how much shit anyone's gonna give me. With the injection of youth into C9's roster, Shroud was doing a lot of lurking in-game and mentoring the new players. The addition of Stewie2K and Automatic to the classic C9 core of Shroud, Nothing, and Skadoodle proved that an American team could play at the highest level. But the real test was competing at a big-time CSGO event where all the best teams showed up. A bit of damage, but not too much, and he's gonna go for the fight again, making it a double. He's out of bullets, otherwise that would have been way more. Trout and Skadoodle, and that's the end. 16-9 in favor of Cloud9. As the bomb goes in, Kenji and Henny know this one could be all but over. That's certainly looking that way. There's one more opportunity, but that's just gone. So it's just Henny with the scout, five opponents, and there it is. Cloud9 eliminates Immortals. No needs left, that's the big deal. They're gonna have to hit the headshots pure and simple. The flash to lead the way. Dennis spots the man, Skadoodle getting shot in the face, but luckily for him, he survives, and that buys enough time for nothing. And Skadoodle, it all comes down. Cloud9 will be playing on the stage tomorrow. Cloud9 just barely squeaked into the elimination rounds at three and two, after opening with back-to-back -back losses to Ninjas in Pajamas and Nadis Vincere. In the bracket stage, there were three North American hopefuls, C9, Liquid, and Optic. But after Cloud9 got their revenge on Nip in the quarters, they were NA's last hope. Cloud9's Cinderella run continued when they faced off against Na'Vi. They showed up in a big way and trounced Na'Vi in a 2-0 victory. There, a lot of damage dealt to Flame. He's gonna step out, wins the fight, but that sets it up for Shroud to step in and pick up two kills of his own. Edward, the last man alive, and it's not gonna be good enough. Shroud the hero, three kills. Two's gonna look the right way at the right time, and it's happening. Nothing he does it, and he just stands up. Ice cold. 16 14, Cloud Nine are in the grand finals of ESL 1 Cologne 2017. A North American team was about to play David against a Goliath in SK Gaming. 
and there was a $100,000 grand prize hanging in the balance. They can actually wrap through. Tonka as well is going to push out from apartments. They didn't have that last time. They didn't have that string to their bow, so automatic down. Mean Shroud has to respond. Nothing saves him, and he steps up in the pit. Cloud9 find five. He's gone anyway. Taco's got to give up on the boost. He's still looking above. Fight the bomb, and no, they don't see him. Shroud looked completely over top of him. Taco's dropped the bomb down for Skadoodle to have to get back in a one versus oh. three. Good shot on Fallen. Knows that Cold's up close, or excuse me, Taco is rather. This could be the final play of the tournament. Cloud9 trying to do what they can as they edge towards the B side. The problem is now where they're so in the open, even if they threw one, they would be able to push through it before it landed. Based on the angle it's thrown, so Phelps could go. He doesn't even need to wait to go. They walk into it, it's lined up, and it's done! And SK, for the home of the organization, will take a second straight ESL1 Cologne Championship. Cloud9 might not have won at all, but they proved once again that they had what it takes to compete at the game's highest level. Shroud was instrumental in C9's run in Cologne, particularly in the bracket stage when it counted most. Of course, after Shroud left C9, they went on to become the first North American team to ever win a major title, but his impact on that run in Boston is notable nonetheless. Shroud was a key cog in what would come to be America's CSGO darlings, and without his consistency, game IQ, and commitment, they wouldn't be the team we know today. Even Stewie admitted that Shroud was one of the things that made him want to be a pro. So when I watched like streamers, like I used to watch Mike play a lot, and I see him do certain aim, like a certain way to aim, then I would try to mimic it. I would try to like steal people's play style and just like add it to my own. Throughout his career as a pro player, Shroud balanced his career with the growth and development of his stream. Three, two, one. Yeah, oh my god! <laughs> what could be better, right? Streamer by night, pro rifler by day. But at times, the Counter-Strike community were critical of Shroud for his career juggling act. Unluckily for uh, Shroud, he unfortunately had uh, not the strongest performance this weekend in the summit. And he got roasted, it looks like, a little bit by uh, the community because he, he streams other games. Motherfucker. Yeah doesn't just play CS every hour of the day. When his performance waned or Cloud9 were struggling, fans wanted to see Shroudy practicing CS, not playing other games on stream. Fuck. Dude, mods. Fuck, dude. Like, literally, Fuck. my mods, <laughs> feel free to fucking ban anyone just crying about other people and what other people say. Like, I don't... I don't care to see that. I don't care to see like any of that shit. After all this? What? Do you still like playing Counter-Strike? No. De after dead fucking. game. When people criticize pro players for not purely just practicing whatever their sport or field or game is all the time. So at the moment, the instance that's really brought this up to me is the case where people are really critiquing Shroud over the fact that he'll stream like pub battlegrounds or whatever the fuck. The, the idea that like, you know, he's doing that instead of practicing and that's why he's not some top player or whatever. You haven't seen the CS run in Shroud. It used to be all praise for you. Now they hate you. <laughs> With that said, even at the height of his career, Shroud was more popular as a streamer and personality than as a pro player. And after C9's run in Cologne in 2017, Shroud started to focus more than ever on streaming. And this aligned nicely with the explosion of one of the biggest games of the last few years. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds was released in March 2017. And by the time the summer rolled around, was taking the gaming world by storm. A few months prior to his choice to step down from C9, Shroud hopped into PUBG. And, well, he was unbelievably good at it. Okay, I'm gonna be good. Oh boy! Oh boy. A little Counter Strike okay. action, baby! Three guys, yeah, at the rock, at the tree. Can you check on me? All dead, all dead. I'm running the field, dude. I'm back. <laughs> knocked out, knocked out. Look at my health! I'm backing off, dude. Come back. Can't. No, dude. Come on. What is feeling, this guy? They're dead. Oh, ho, ho! You're nuts, you're nuts. Oh, Jesus! My God, dude. And then, in August 2017, Shroud stepped back from the team starting roster and decided to focus entirely on his stream. I messaged Jack and I was like, hey, Jack's the owner of Cena, by the way. I was like, hey. Uh, I kind of want to step down. 
I would love to be your guys' backup. Um, I want to see where full-time stream takes me. It felt like it was about time for me to go, you know? Like, this whole PUBG thing came out. I've enjoyed PUBG so much, and I'm, like, slowly losing my passion to compete. I just want to relax, sit here and game. During that same August, PUBG had its biggest streaming month. The game was streamed to an average of around 100,000 viewers at a time. As Shroud leapt into streaming and left the safety of his pro career behind, he and PUBG were attached at the hip, and both were only getting bigger. In August 2017, the first month he streamed full-time, he averaged just under 20,000 viewers at a time. Since then, he's never averaged less, and peaked in April of 2018 with an average of 40,000 viewers. I'm literally like shaking. <sighs> Try to keep it all in. Like, this is crazy. I'm, be, I'm about to be at 7,500 subs. You guys... Uh, oh my god, the subs. Oh my god. I look over to my right and it's just, it's just a wall. <laughs> oh my god. Professional esports and streaming have operated adjacent to one another for years now. It's not surprising for your favorite pro player to also dip their foot into Twitch to help build their brand. But as of late, we've seen streamers whose Twitch personality surpasses any fame or fandom they'd achieve as a pro player. Figures like Ninja and Dr. Disrespect have never been in the forefront of any major professional esport but have become some of gaming's biggest stars. And Shroud wanted to give himself a chance at that, at being more than an above average pro Counter-Strike player. That is pristine! Could be peeking the J-Bone and 94, thank you for the two months. Thank you guys so much for all the subs, by the way. Idiotic, thank you for the three months. Motherfucker. Simon, thank you for the two months. Jolva, thank you. Nocturnal Genius, thank you. I can't. Sure. Ah, oh, Shroud. Why, Shroud? I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. Good oh my fight. Oh, Shroud, talk to me! Even while he was a pro player, Shroud was always known as the king of Reddit. But since his commitment to full-time streaming, he's earned that nickname tenfold. Wait. You're not knifing? Yeah, that's not knifing. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm done to play overtime. <laughs> 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 Other top broadcasters fill up your computer screen with music, gimmicks, and boisterous entertainment. But Shroud is just a straight up gamer, and he's damn good at every game he plays. Okay, um. <laughs> Fuck, that was my last bullet, too. I always pick Shroud's mind because I consider Shroud the best PC player on Twitch. But when you want to talk about PC and PC precision, I think Shroud is its just miles in front of anybody. In a lot of ways, Shroud has become a sanctum for the old guard of esports fans to kick back and hang out. He hasn't adapted to the overly boisterous style of other massive streamers like Ninja. Shroud is just a great gamer who streams every day, and he owns that brand. And it's that rock-solid brand that he's built his community around. Shroud has become the place to go for esports fans, Redditors, and anyone looking to watch high-level gameplay and grab a laugh. <clears throat> $100 to the person who takes out Adam right now. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> He's still, he's still alive. Oh my god. What the heck? This is a fun game, dude. <laughs> I don't think they do it. <laughs> what cements his style even more is his consistent support of small streamers. He's found a way to build content out of helping people. We're gonna host a random RuneScape small streamer, okay? What the fuck? 
Shroud has hosted you with 30,317 viewers? What? What? Type 1 diabetes and has five-year-old daughter. Show her some Twitch Prime love. Give her that Twitch Prime fucking love right now. Like, what this is gonna help stress? her medical bills. I don't want the just, first thing you just guys go. see to be. Where the fuck I am? Just go. You being ridiculous. Just go. Just do it. Oh my god. Look at all the Twitch primes, dude. I've never seen so many subs in my life. What in the world? Look at all the subs. You guys are incredible, dude. Oh Holy yeah. fuck. Guys. No matter the game, Shroud's viewership stays strong. Something that's unusual for all but the biggest streamers. Shroud has recently streamed CSGO, PUBG, Fortnite, Realm Royale, and World of Warcraft. Somehow, he's just great at every game he tries. Overshadowed by his growth as a streamer is the fact that Shroud has become one of the best PUBG players on the planet. But I was watching Shroud last night play Battle Guns, first person. The guy is amazing. He might be the best player in the game. Recently, in a team tournament, Shroud and another popular streamer, Chad, took down nine out of 10 winner winner chicken dinners in the event. Oh my god. Hey boys, GG, nine wins. Should nine be 10. Out of 10 wins, one second place with a man down. I'll take that shit. In a lot of ways, the popularity of Fortnite has epitomized why Shroud's viewers Let's <laughs> go.